Are you planning to travel to Turkey anytime soon? Then wait right here because this is your all you need guide to plan your visit to Turkey. But before we start the video, I want to address the devastating earthquake that hit Turkey and Syria today and killed thousands. Let's take a second to pray for the deceased and hope that the country gets back on its feet soon and also pray that everyone is safe and sound. So to enter Turkey, a lot of countries don't need visas. If you're from one of these countries, you don't need a tourist visa to enter Turkey for a maximum of 90 days for travel and tourism purposes. But if your country is not in the list, then you need either an e-visa or a stamp visa to enter the country. A lot of countries are eligible for e-visas, but there's one requirement that you need to fulfill. You need to have a valid visa from any of the Schengen countries, US, UK or Ireland and that is when you can apply for an e-visa. It takes a few days and you get it pretty quickly, it's all online. But if you don't have a visa from one of these countries, then you would probably need to go for the stamp visa option. I also went for stamp visa because I did not have visas from these required countries. So you just need to fill up the application form on their website, collect all the necessary documents and go to the Turkish consulate or embassy and submit everything along with the visa fees. It takes around two to six weeks for the visa to be granted, so make sure you have got enough time in hand. Although they are pretty fast, my visa came within 10 days, but you need to make sure that you have got enough time in hand in case it doesn't come in within your flight's time. Also one mistake I made was I booked the flights, like full-fledged booked it, but you can also reserve the tickets uh, if you are going through a travel agent and once your visa is approved, that's when you pay for it and get the tickets booked. Turkey requires you to have a travel insurance and I went with Safety Wing Nomads Insurance. This is not sponsored. I actually found them online. It was pretty cheap, I think $25 for 10 days and it covered everything that is required by the Turkish Embassy for your visa application. So if you're looking for a cheap travel insurance that covers everything, you should actually check out Safety Wing. They are pretty good. If you're thinking about currency, Turkish Lira is the official currency and this is the current exchange rate as of Feb 2023. Turkey is seeing a lot of inflation and that is why their uh, currency is depreciating which also means you will get more value for a dollar over there. So when I went, uh, I had Australian dollars and one Australian dollar was 12 Turkish Lira which was a very good deal and it was actually cheap for me to travel over there with the exchange rate. But you can easily use euros as well and you'll find a lot of times when the quote in euros rather than liras. And one thing to note, don't exchange currency at airports. Rather, go to Grand Bazaar in Istanbul where you will find the best rates and you get the best value for your money. So just exchanged 500 Australian dollars from this place. They were giving a 12.19 rate and the market rate is 12.4 which is a good price. I saw a couple, a couple others as well. The rate was best over here. So and if you question about if Turkey is expensive, it is not an expensive country to travel in but if you're going during peak seasons, the prices you will find will be hiked up at least two or three times than the normal prices that you would find in shoulder or off season. So Turkey can be expensive if you're traveling in the wrong season, which is the peak season. Now you've got your visa sorted, your currency exchanged, you are going to land in Istanbul. Most flights actually take you to Istanbul because that's the biggest airport in the country and that is where you will find most other flights to other places in Turkey. So once you're in Istanbul airport, how do you go to your hotel or accommodation? I'll tell you the cheaper option first. You can reach the city by taking Hawaii's bus, which costs only 87 liras and drops you near Taksim or Sultan Ahmed. 805 lira for two people to get from uh, the airport to, the, uh, to Taksim. They run 24 hours a day, every 15 minutes, and you can get these buses from both Istanbul Airport as well as Saw Airport, which is on the Asian side. Alternatively, if you want to reach your hotel's doorstep, or you have a big group or you just want to travel comfortably because you have a lot of luggage then you can book a shared taxi to your hotel and split the cost it costs around five to six hundred lira but with a big group of people it can be divided equally and cost you lesser than what you would pay for the bus as well and it gets you to your hotel so isn't that a good thing a lot of these taxi companies have booking offices right at the airport so as soon as you as you get out just start walking towards the right of the airport uh, gates and you'll see these big kiosks that say shared taxis to Taksim or Sultan Ahmad hotels once you land you would also want to buy a sim card well you can buy them at the airport there are three companies who have kiosks once you collect your baggage and exit, take a ride and you'll find them there. Keep walking, they are pretty big, not something that you can ignore. 
so you'll find them right there but I would suggest to skip these kiosks at the airport and buy it from Taksim or Sultan Ahmad because there are plenty of shops and it is cheap over there. That's what I did. I think I found a SIM card which was half the price of what they were offering at the airport. Now you must be thinking about where you should stay if you're visiting Istanbul for the first time and trust me I had the same question because I was so confused between Taksim and Sultan Ahmad and there were videos which were saying that you should not stay in these places, you should stay in the Asian side instead because that's a better place, quite a place. However, I have a different opinion. If this is your first time travelling to Turkey and visiting Istanbul, I would definitely say you should stay in Taksim or Sultan Ahmad because these are the places where most of the tourist attractions are and it is well connected to every other part of Istanbul as well. And being your first time, you will mostly be spending your time at the touristy places, looking at the things that other people look before exploring other sides of Istanbul. So if you're staying in Taksim and Sultan Ahmad, these two places are where most tourist spots are and you'll probably be spending most of your time here. And it's wise to be at, at a walking distance to all these places and save on transportation as well. Generally, Turkey is a very safe country for tourists because there are so many people traveling every day, so the people are very used to it. But there are pockets of areas which you should be careful of in every city. So the safest would be to stay near the tourist center and book hotels in advance as Booking.com does not work in Turkey. Hotels are generally cheap and offer complimentary breakfast that you cannot miss. They are delicious. If you are also thinking what you should wear while traveling in Turkey, then let me explain to you that Turkish fashion is very unique and diverse. Some parts of the country are more conservative while some are more liberal. So definitely pack for both. When going into mosques, both men and women are required to dress modestly where they are required to adhere to their particular dress code. The shoulders and legs should be covered of both and women should have a head cover. So to all the girls out there, I would suggest to keep a stole and a beach cover-up kind of jacket with you at all times. But even if you don't have, don't worry, you can always rent it from the mosques. Now, traveling between cities in Turkey is super easy because there are airports everywhere. And companies like Pegasus Airways offer very cheap tickets if you book well in advance. And a lot of flights between the longest of destinations are only about two and a half hours max. So you might find yourself flying to another city in the morning and flying back the same day in the evening. Sometimes tickets can be as low as 35 Canadian dollars one way. Can you imagine that? How cheap is it traveling in Turkey? But yes, if you go during peak season, that's not the price you would pay. I paid about $100 return. But what if you want to travel even cheaper? Well, don't worry. There are plenty of overnight buses that run between cities. They can be very long, sometimes even 13-14 hours, but they are super cheap and the buses are super comfy. And if you take an overnight bus, you can always save up on the night's accommodation. So it's a win-win. When I was planning my trip, I had only 10 days and I was so desperate to increase the number of days because there were so many places I wanted to go and so much I wanted to see. Initially, I had planned to see Istanbul, Cappadocia, Fethiye, Oludanese and Pamukkale. And I was also trying to squeeze in Izmir but ended up only visiting Istanbul and Cappadocia because I thought I should travel slow and see the places properly without rushing everything in one trip. But in saying that, you need to understand that Turkey is a big and geographically diverse country. It has everything, cities, mountains, beaches, deserts, and every place has its own charm. You would want to visit every single city in this country. If this is your first time visiting Turkey, you should not miss Istanbul or Cappadocia. They both are beautiful cities, very diverse, very different from each other. And if you miss Cappadocia, I'm telling you, you would regret it because there is no other place like that on this earth. Apart from these two cities, you should also visit any city on the East Coast if you are going during summer and want to have that summery beachy holiday. They are very beautiful. Antalya is also one of the top tourist places in Turkey. So if you have time, you cannot miss that either. I missed it, but I do plan to visit very soon. So all these other cities will be on my list next time. The most popular destinations for any first timer are Istanbul, Cappadocia and all of East Coast. There's Izmir, there's Pamukkale, there's Fethiye, Oludanese, Kars, Ankara, Antalya. There's so much to see that you'll definitely be short of days and I could spend months exploring the country and still not see everything. Normally people go for 10 to 15 days and if you're also planning the same then make sure you're not packing too many places in a short time. This is what I think works very well for this country. 
once a day should be three to four days at least if you want to explore it properly and experience the culture because as soon as, soon as you move from one city to the other you will find something peculiar about that other destination which you had not seen in the previous one and it is, it is very important to actually experience the culture in every city that you are visiting in Turkey because that is what this country is famous for so if you ask me how many days are enough well doesn't matter how many days you pack you will never see all of it so make sure you travel slow and see everything properly as you go if i start counting must do's in turkey my list will never end but my most favorite thing to do was hot air ballooning in cappadocia no matter how many people have done it and how mainstream it gets that experience is unbeatable that sunrise and the insane landscape is incomparable with anything else or anywhere else in this world this should be your top experience if you are going to turkey and if you think that this is a little too expensive it is expensive but the views and the experience is worth every penny and a good way to experience this at a low cost is going during off season or shoulder season but make sure you have got enough days in hand because sometimes due to bad weather the flight may get cancelled or rescheduled so you should have enough mornings in hand to do it again in case yours does turkey is a country which sees all four seasons in equal proportion the May to September is usually peak season when the prices are high, the crowds are high and most people travel because of weather and school holidays. People like their summer holidays, beach destinations, Turkey is the cheapest option for most Europeans to travel to so you will see a lot of people. But October, November is quieter because it starts getting colder, autumn comes in, shoulder season starts, people start going back to their work and back to their uh, countries and that is when you see crowd but not as much and the prices start getting lower. December, Jan and I think Feb as well is when the winter stays in Turkey where even places like Cappadocia and Istanbul see snow days so it is like super cold. You will find very minimum tourists, cheap prices but also some activities might not uh, operate during these, these months. And if you have a hot air balloon booked, it is very likely that it will not operate because of the winds and the cold weather and it might also be cloudy. So you need to measure out what season you want to see the country in. Although I would say I, I definitely want to see Turkey in winter with the snow because I am sure it will look epic. In my opinion, I think March, April and October are really ideal months to visit this country when the crowds are low and the prices are relatively cheaper than what you would find in the peak season. Turkish cuisine is one of the world's best and you can see its influence of the rich history that the country has from Byzantine and Ottoman empires into its food as well. The food is something that you would have never tasted anywhere else in the world. There is so much to eat and the flavors are so delicious and rich that you would not want to stop eating and trying different kinds of food when you are there. You would normally find a lot of meat including beef, lamb and chicken in a lot of their dishes. My favorite was doner kebab. So if you are a meat lover, Turkey is your delight. And interestingly, every region that you would travel to has a different food culture and a different and different taste. Don't worry, I have recommendations for the vegetarians as well. I love beans and rice from this restaurant near Soleimani Mosque. I forgot the name of the dish. I will put it here, but it was so good. There's another very nice vegetarian delish, delicacy called kumpir, which is jacket potato with fillings. And finally, you cannot miss their baklava and kunafe from Hafiz Mustafa in Istanbul. Another thing I loved was pottery chicken in Kureme, Cappadocia. It's a regional dish and it is made in a clay pot and they open it up right in front of you. I'll tell you all about my Cappadocia's experience in my next video but if you are there you should definitely try pottery chicken. And I think I mentioned this but Turkish breakfast is one of the best I have ever had. And look at this spread. I could be full but the food doesn't finish. After all the nice things I told you about Turkey, there is one more thing that you need to be very aware of if you are travelling in the country, which is scams. Sad to say, but Turkey has a lot of tourist scams. I had fallen for two myself and the most common is taxis overcharging you and if you disagree, they threaten to take you to the police. This mostly happens when you are going to, a, to an airport so you don't have any other option other than paying them. But yes, this is very common and I don't know how to avoid it. So just make sure you bargain if you are asked to pay more. 
Then there's the Shushana scam, which I had read a lot about, but I thought it did not happen with me. And the other scam that happened with me was hiked up prices. And this person, I it was my mistake. I did not see the menu, and when I asked for the bill, it was way too much than what the thing was for, and I had to pay for it because they had their own excuses. I would definitely suggest you to research common scams that happen in the cities that you're visiting so you don't fall for them and be open to the idea of being scammed. Don't be very sad if you have if you get scammed because it will happen. It's very common. It happens in every other country in the world which is full of tourists. So it is okay. It's part of traveling. And lastly, here are some hidden gems that people don't know about or people avoid going to because they want to see the nicer parts of the country, the more popular parts of the country. So these hidden gems were the ones that I found when I was researching for my Turkey trip and although I could not go there, I am definitely planning to go back and visit these places in Turkey. So yeah, that was all for today and I will see you next time with another video mostly about Cappadocia. That is the last part of this series which I haven't made yet. I had spent three days in Cappadocia and it was a lot of fun. And if you want to see what I did in Istanbul for six days, these are the videos that you should be looking at. I have detailed everything that I did, where I stayed, what I, where I went, what I ate, what scams I fell into and everything that you need to know about traveling in Istanbul and why I spent there six days. It's a lot of time, isn't it? But yes, it was definitely worth it. Check these videos out and here is a full itinerary for Turkey, which I think you should refer to if you're planning your trip because these two cities are really nice and I think I was very much in love traveling there for so long. And now bye, see you next time.